I can dig caves, but I don't need a shovel to do it. I store silver and gold in these caves. I can build bridges, and I can make golden crowns. Everyone needs me at least once in a lifetime, but most people are scared of me. Who am I? I'm a dentist. The mystery of growth. When Mike was 15 years old, he hammered a nail into a cherry tree in his grandmother's garden. He wanted to mark his height. Ten years later, he returned to see if the nail was any higher. If the tree grew one inch taller each year, how much higher would the nail be? The nail's position wouldn't change. Trees grow at their top. An orange riddle. Jenny was locked inside a room with 15 other people. Each of them could see the entire room and everyone inside. To do it, they didn't need to turn their heads or bodies or move in any way. To get out of the room, Jenny had to place an orange in such a way that everyone but one person could see it. The girl managed to do it. But how? She put the orange on one person's head. Which one is more expensive? Eric went to the supermarket and took two oranges and one watermelon. They cost him $6. Helen went to the same supermarket. She opted for a lemon, an orange, and a watermelon. The girl paid $8. Oranges, lemons, and watermelons have different prices per piece. What's more expensive, an orange or a lemon? Eric had two oranges and a watermelon, which cost him $6. These two kinds of fruit have different prices, so it can't be 2 plus 2 plus 2. The only other combination is 1 plus 1 plus 4. Then, a watermelon costs $4. Helen paid $4 for the watermelon and a dollar for the orange. It means the lemon cost her $3, which makes it more expensive than the orange. The Worried Wife Jason got into a car accident and lost his memory. When he came around in his hospital room, he saw three young women near his bed. But the man couldn't remember who they were. Each of them claimed to be his wife. The doctor told them Jason had to stay in the hospital for at least one more week. Sweetheart, what am I supposed to do if you never remember me? The woman on the left was sobbing bitterly. Honey, I'm so worried. Let's go home. I don't like it here. I'll take better care of you at home," the one in the middle exclaimed. The girl on the right was furious. They're trying to steal you from me. Let's leave this place right away. Which lady is the man's wife? She's the one on the left. She's the only one who's worried. The other two want to take Jason away from the hospital, but he's injured and needs medical care. The Inheritance Jim's uncle Archibald was a wealthy man who loved playing pranks on his relatives. That's why, when he passed away, no one could find his will. But one day, a few years later, Jim was looking through some old papers. Suddenly, his breath caught in his throat. The document he was holding was his uncle's will. It read, I hid all my money and other valuables at 3 p.m. sharp under my favorite cherry tree, right where its shadow ends. The one who digs it out will be my heir. Jim was beyond happy. He was going to be wealthy. He drove to his uncle's posh villa and found the cherry tree. He waited till 3 p.m. and started to dig. But try as he might, his efforts didn't pay off. Confused and upset, he had to return home. Why didn't he find anything? It's been several years since Jim's uncle hid his valuables. 
the tree has grown taller and its shadow has become longer too. Who's poor? These two girls are putting on their makeup and getting ready to go out and have fun. They're using pretty much the same things – lipsticks, cosmetics, clothes. Their phones look similar too. But one of these girls is poor. Who is it? Take a closer look at the girl on the left. Her phone gives her away. It's an obvious knockoff. But then again, she saves some money. She won't be poor for long. Who is it? Mark and Liza had been dating for two years. One day, the guy came to his girlfriend's house. He was going to propose to her. But when he made it there, he found Liza with another man. Mark was furious. The other guy got scared and rushed out of the house. Liza was shouting it was her brother, but Mark knew better. Unfortunately, he hadn't seen the guy's face clearly. When he ran outside, he saw three men. Which one is Liza's lover? It's the guy on the left. It's freezing outside, and the other two guys have red cheeks and noses. But the third guy's face is pale because he just left a warm house. A weird choice. Every day, Mark rides his bike to the railway station to get to the college. There are two stops near his home. One is a mile away from his house, and the other two miles away in the opposite direction. In the morning, he always gets on the train at the first stop. And in the afternoon, he gets off at the second. Why? Mark's home and the stations are on the hill, and this method allows the guy to ride his bike down without any effort. A money problem A notorious criminal caught rich businessman Brian and locked him in a room. I won't let you go until you double the money I leave for you. And the criminal put $5,000 on the table. By the time he returned, Brian had already doubled the money. He hadn't left the room or communicated with anyone. Then how did he do it? He put the money in front of the mirror. A realization. Three friends fell asleep under a tree in the countryside. While they were resting, a boy painted mustaches on their faces. Once the men woke up, they started to laugh. But then, all of a sudden, they stopped. Why? At first, they saw the mustaches on their friends' faces and found it funny. But then, they realized their friends were laughing too. It meant they had mustaches on their faces as well. Wealthier grandfather Aaron and his grandfather were very close. They spent a lot of time together and loved cracking detective riddles. Unfortunately, the elderly man passed away unexpectedly. His lawyer informed the relatives that the grandfather had hidden all his money, and he was a wealthy man. The one to find it would get all the inheritance. Aaron realized the grandfather wanted him to get everything. He ran to the elderly man's office and soon understood where to look for the money. Can you figure it out? There's a cross drawn on the picture with a fountain. That's the fountain from their garden. Aaron has to look for the money there. Trapped in a well James was a famous detective who could crack even the trickiest mysteries. Once, he was investigating a case and found some crucial evidence. The next morning, he woke up in a well. It was old and deep, but luckily not filled with water. On the flip side, there was no way the detective could get out to the surface. Suddenly, James saw his main suspect's face at the top of the well. 
You won't live long enough to rat me out, the man shouted. And then, the detective felt soil falling on his head. The guy was going to bury him alive. But in an hour, James was already out of the well and running away. How did he manage to get out? The detective started to shake off and tamp down the soil that was falling into the well. He was getting closer and closer to the surface until he managed to jump out and run away. Stolen Documents Early in the morning, Ashton got a call from his friend, an owner of a big company. The man was in distress. A very important contract had disappeared from his office. It was on the desk the evening before, but nowhere to be found in the morning. Ashton immediately headed to his friend's office to question the employees. In no time, he had three suspects. Ben said he'd spent the previous evening at the movies. Mason took his girlfriend out to dinner. And Jesse was invited to a party. It didn't take Ashton long to understand who was lying. It was Ben. His ticket wasn't torn, so he didn't actually go to the movies. Real or fake? Paul decided to visit his elderly aunt he hadn't seen for several months. But when he got to her house, he saw two men wearing construction worker uniforms. They were moving out some furniture. What are you doing here? Paul asked. Mrs. Sanders hired us to help her get rid of old furniture. We're from Pick and Carry Transport Company, one of the men answered. He sounded honest. But Paul was a smart guy. He felt there was something wrong about the whole situation. Suddenly, he realized the men were burglars. How did he understand it? There was no company van near his aunt's house just a dark car with tinted windows. Plus, why were the men wearing construction worker uniforms if they were movers? So Mia wanted to go to the party her classmate was throwing, but her father didn't let her. Mia thought for a while and remembered her grandparents had just moved to their new one-story country house. She asked her dad if she could visit them at the weekend, and the man agreed. But Mia went to the party instead. When she got back home after the weekend, her father asked her if she had had a good time. Mia replied she helped in the garden a little and spent the rest of the day upstairs. Her father immediately knew she was lying. How? Mia said she'd been upstairs, but her grandparents' house is a one-story cottage. Liar, liar, pants on fire. 11 plus 3 equals 2. 10 plus 5 equals 3. Now how is that possible? It makes sense when we talk about time. 11 o'clock plus 3 hours is 2 o'clock. 10 o'clock plus 5 hours is 3 o'clock. One king wants to find out which of his three sons is the smartest. He takes three chests and puts his crown in one of them. On each chest, there's a statement, but only one of these statements is true. The crown is in this chest. The crown isn't in this chest. The crown isn't in chest number one. Each person can only open one chest. The son who figures out where the crown is will be the next king. But can you solve this riddle? If the first statement is true, the other two must be false. It's not so because the second statement turns out to be correct. Uh So this assumption's wrong. If the second statement is true, the crown isn't in the first chest. It's not in the second chest either. Then it must be in the third one. But this makes the third statement correct, Uh although it shouldn't be. If the third statement is true, the first one's wrong and there's no crown in the first chest. The second statement's also wrong. Now, there are no contradictions. The crown's in the second chest. 
Here's a sequence of letters. Which letter should you add? The missing letter is F. If you put it at the end, you'll get E. James and Taylor were best friends in elementary school. Unfortunately, when the children were 10, James and his parents moved to another state. The friends lost contact. 15 years later, James and Taylor accidentally bumped into each other in a cafe. It was their first meeting since school. They recognized each other and started talking. It turned out Taylor was already married and had a daughter. Wow, said James, does she look like her dad? Oh no, Taylor said, the girl's a mini version of her mother. Ah, so she must be a blonde with blue eyes. This time, James was right. How did he understand that? Taylor's a girl. She's the mother. And James only needed to describe her. You're outside a room with three switches in the off position. Your task is to find out which one turns on the light in the room. You can flip as many switches as you want, but you can walk into the room and check if the light's on only once. How can you understand which switch controls the light bulb? Turn on two random switches and wait for a couple of minutes. Then, turn one of them off and walk into the room. If the light's on, the switch connected to the bulb is the one you left in the on position. If the room's dark, touch the light bulb. If it's hot, then the controlling switch is the one you just turned off. If the light bulb is cold, the correct switch is the only one you haven't touched. Esme got lost in the forest. She was wandering around for the whole day. Finally, at dusk, she saw a spooky house. A witch lived there. The girl had nowhere else to go, so she entered the house and asked for help. The witch said if Esme solved her riddle, she'd be free to leave in the morning. Here's how the riddle went. 17J, 70M, 96A, 162J, 256S, 354, hmm, what's the missing letter? The 17th day of the year is in January. The 70th day of the year is in March. The 96th is in April. The 162nd in June. And the day 256 is in September. Day 354 is in December. The missing letter is D. A young girl got her first job as a maid in a rich lady's house. Once, when she was tidying up, she noticed a very expensive collection of books. She made a break to look through one of them and then returned it to the shelf. The girl kept working until the very evening. No one else was at home. After finishing her work, the maid returned to the shelf and discovered that the sixth book was missing. But she clearly remembered that the book had been there before. It was the one she had been looking through. When the lady returned, the girl confessed she'd lost the book. But the woman only laughed and said everything was fine. Nothing was missing. How come? The collection had eight books. The ninth book was actually the sixth one. The girl accidentally put it upside down. Right before Christmas, the police got information that a famous thief named Alfonso had left Chile. He boarded the plane to Los Angeles. The only thing the detectives knew about the man was that he had a beard. At the airport, the police officers met a group of people. They had just arrived from different countries. The detectives noticed four men with beards and interrogated them. The first one said he'd come from London. The second told the police he arrived from Chile but his name was Cristiano. The third man answered he'd come from Sweden. And the fourth one was also from London. The police didn't even need to check their plane tickets to spot the criminal. How did they know?
It's Christmas time, but the man who supposedly came from Sweden is dressed too lightly for that climate. He must have arrived from Chile, where it's summer. A road accident happened on a foggy day. Two drivers were taken to a hospital. Each of them had a concussion. Interestingly, their cars didn't even have a scratch. What happened? The drivers were going in opposite directions. It was foggy, so they stuck their heads out of the window. They didn't notice each other and hit their heads. Ow! Samantha was born on January 27th. For the first 20 years of her life, she celebrated her birthday in the winter. But starting with her 21st birthday, she began celebrating it in the summer. Why? She moved to the Southern Hemisphere, where it's summer in January. Two sisters, Ava and Nicole, are very honest girls. They always tell the truth, except for one day a year. On their birthdays, they always lie. Today is September 17th, and you ask them when their birthdays are. Ava says hers was yesterday, and Nicole says her birthday is tomorrow. The next day, you ask them again, and they say the exact same thing. Can you guess when their birthdays are? They can't have two birthdays. It means that one day, one of them lied, and the next day, it was the other's turn. Since Ava mentioned yesterday, her birthday must come first. So Ava's birthday is on September 17th, and Nicole's on September 18th. Bethany, Tommy, Eliza, and James spent the whole day at home alone. Their mother didn't let them enter her room. When she came back in the evening, she wanted to eat her chocolate bar. But it was gone. She went downstairs and asked the kids who had eaten her treat. Bethany said she'd been doing her algebra homework the whole day and hadn't eaten anything at all. Tommy replied he'd been playing football outside. Eliza said she didn't even know where their mom kept chocolate. And James simply claimed it hadn't been him. Their mom knew immediately who had taken her chocolate. How did she figure it out? It was Eliza. The mother never mentioned what kind of treat was missing. But Eliza somehow knew it was chocolate. The father of identical quadruplets, Aurora, Belle, Chloe, and Dana, called the teacher and asked her to let Dana leave earlier. She had a doctor's appointment. The teacher couldn't tell the girls apart. To have some fun, the quadruplets refused to confess who was who, but gave their teacher a hint. Chloe is somewhere in the middle. Dana is to the left of Belle and to the right of Aurora. Aurora is right next to Dana. How can the teacher identify the girls? Chloe is somewhere in the middle, and since Dana has someone on both sides of her, she must be in the middle too. If Chloe was the second, Dana would be the third. Then Dana would be to the left of Belle, and Belle would be the fourth. Then Aurora must be the first. But Uh it doesn't work, because Aurora and Dana have to be next to each other. If we switch Chloe and Dana, Dana will be right next to Aurora, but still to Uh the left of Belle. So the right order is Aurora, Dana, Chloe, and Belle. Dana's the second girl. Mark and Ben are waiting for the elevator. Mark has to go down to the first floor, and Ben's going to have some dinner up on the 10th. Two elevators arrive at the same time, and they both get in different elevators. Well, one of them isn't too smart. Which one? It's Ben. He needs to go up, but his elevator's going down. You're chilling watching TV when you hear the doorbell. You aren't expecting anyone, but you go to the door anyway and open it. There's no one there, 
just a basket of candies and a letter. The letter says, Dear Charlie, thank you very much for your help. I really like you and wanted to ask if you want to go out sometime. All my love, always. There's no name on the letter and you have no clue who it could be from. Luckily, there's a short little riddle. 3rd of August, 4th of February, 2nd of May, 3rd of December, 6th of October. Can you crack the code and find out who your secret admirer is? The 3rd of August means the third letter in August, which is G. The fourth letter of February is R. The second letter of May is A. The third letter of December is C. And the sixth letter of October is E. So, your secret admirer's name is Grace. Do you even know anyone named Grace? You open your eyes and find yourself in a dungeon. There are a couple of torches around to light the room up a bit. You walk over to the door and try to open it. But, of course, it's locked. There's three buttons on the right side of the door. A red one, a purple one, and a yellow one. One of them will set you free, and the other two will lock you in forever. But you're lucky. There's a hint. N-T-E-R-O-W-L-U-T-P-P-B. Hmm, buy a vowel, will ya? Which button should you press to escape? If you put the letters in the right order, you'll get purple button. Since only one button opens the door and the other two trap you in, you gotta try your luck with the purple one. Jessie is a mom of three who works as a detective. She comes home late one night and goes right into the kitchen to get dinner ready. Waiting for her in there, a huge mess. Looks like someone already had their dinner. A chocolate pasta sandwich. She doesn't let her kids eat that kind of stuff. So she goes upstairs and rounds up all her kids. Katie, Serena, and Hannah are all busy doing their homework. They all deny eating chocolate pasta, but she still knows who it was. Who's lying? And how did Jessie know? Back in the kitchen, the knife's on the right-hand side of the chocolate pasta. That means the person who made the sandwich is left-handed. She has only one left-handed kid, and that's Hannah. You get lost in the forest, and you end up wandering around the whole day. Finally, at sunset, you come across a small and spooky house. Looks like a witch lives there. You have no other choice, so you go in and ask her to show you the way out of this crazy forest. The witch agrees, but on one condition. You have to play a game. If you answer correctly, she lets you go. If you make a mistake, you have to stay with her forever. Mm. Here's the question. You have something that's yours. You barely use it, but others use it a lot. What is it? It's your name. You're abroad, enjoying the sun and a much-needed vacation. One day at the beach, you meet a beautiful woman and spend the whole day with her. In the evening, you ask her if you can meet again tomorrow. She smiles and says, yes, if you can guess where she comes from. But she really likes you, so she gives you a hint. The place I'm from is two of Armenia, one of Germany, two of England, one of Turkey, two of India, and one of Australia. Can you guess where she's from? Two of Armenia means you have to take the first two letters of the name Armenia, A-R. The rest are the same. One of Germany is G, two of England is E-N, one of Turkey is T. I-N from India, and A from Australia. Together, they make Argentina. That was a lot of work. She better be worth it. You're wandering in a different forest, and you come across a picnic. They're all witches. You try to hide before they notice you, but uh uh-oh. What do they want? Actually, they're pretty chill. They just need a little help. 
There are eight of them, and one of them celebrating her 999th birthday. They've got a birthday cake, but there's a problem. And no, it's not that there's too many candles and too little cake. Their magic knife can only make three cuts, and they can't figure out how to cut the cake into eight pieces. Can you figure it out? First, cut the cake in half. Then make another cut so there are four equal pieces. Now cut the cake sideways through the middle so it has two layers. Now everybody gets a piece. Helena finally got herself a new guitar. She wanted to play it right away, but she had school. She locked it in her room and left. When she got home that evening, the guitar was gone. Her family was kind of fun. They were always pulling pranks on each other. She asked everyone about her guitar. Here's what they said. Her mom said she hadn't even seen the guitar. Her dad said he saw it when he walked past her room, but then he didn't go in because he had a lot of work to do. Her brother said he was at home, but spent the whole day downstairs. Helena solved the mystery instantly. Can you figure it out? Her dad's lying. He said he saw the guitar while walking past her room, but that would be impossible. She locked the door on her way out. Mrs. Miller left the house and put a $100 bill in the dining room for her son. But the son said he never saw the money. There were three other people in the house that morning. Stephen, the gardener, Bill, the cook, and Molly, the housemaid. Steve said he saw the money, but he's an honest man. He'd never take it. Bill said he spent the morning in the kitchen and didn't see the money at all. Molly said she had to open the kitchen window, but didn't want the bill to fly away. So she put it in this book between pages 35 and 36. Can you tell who's lying? Molly is. She couldn't have put the money between pages 35 and 36. They're two sides of the same page. Kevin's a single father of four. He was working late one evening and got a call from a neighbor. The neighbor just saw one of his daughters walking around with her friends in a totally different neighborhood. It was dark, so the neighbor couldn't tell which daughter it was. When Kevin came back home, he asked his daughters which one of them was out after dark. Lily said she was reading all evening. Madison said she was playing Uno. Riley said she was in the backyard in the pool. Ava said she was talking to a friend in her room. Kevin immediately knew who was lying. Do you? It was Madison. She couldn't have been playing Uno by herself. She's hiding something. Josh was walking in a forest at night and came across an old castle. He was curious, so he found a way in and started walking down a corridor. Pretty soon, he met three people. They said they were two werewolves and a vampire. Hmm. They wanted to keep Josh in there forever, but in the end, decided to give him one chance to get away. He had to guess who the vampire was. He was allowed to ask the same question to each of them as long as it wasn't, Are you a vampire? Josh asked, what's your eye color? Why did he ask it, and how would that even help him? Vampires don't have a reflection in the mirror and don't show up in photos. The vampire probably wouldn't know what color eyes it had. Bonus time! Can you think of any other question that Josh could have asked those three guys? How well do you know your vampires and werewolves? Jaden bought a beautiful ring for his girlfriend. He wanted to propose to her at the weekend. He left the ring on his desk at home and went to work. But when he got back in the evening, he didn't find the ring. Only his three sisters were at home that day, and all of them didn't like his girlfriend. He went to question each of them. Mia was in her room. She said she had spent the whole day there painting the walls. Emily was in the kitchen. 
she answered she'd been cooking a birthday cake for her friend. And the youngest, Nora, was in the garden. She said she'd been planting roses. It didn't take Jaden long to figure out who had taken the ring. Do you know who it was? It was Nora. She looks too tidy after spending the entire day in the garden. Plus, she doesn't have any garden tools. Carter's literally running home from school. He has a piece of cake waiting for him there. But as soon as the boy opens the fridge, he realizes someone's eaten his cake. It can only be his elder sister, Maya. He sees her leaving the bathroom. How could you? I've been dreaming about this cake for the whole day. What are you talking about? I came home half an hour ago. I immediately got in the shower and just finished. Carter isn't convinced. His sister's hair is completely dry. Maya is both telling the truth about the shower and lying about not eating the cake. How is it possible? The girl did get in the shower, but she didn't turn the water on. She was just sitting there and eating the cake. (laughs) Someone stole the money Adam kept in his safe. Oh my god. The police questioned three suspects. Julia said she'd gone to bed at 10 p.m. and fallen asleep right away. Parker told the detective he'd been watching TV from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. And Aiden had said he'd been at his friend's playing computer games all night. The police immediately arrested the thief. Who was it? It was Parker. He was very specific about the time. The best player of Julian's volleyball team disappeared right before the game. Julian suspected three players from the rival team. Jackson said, I've just returned from the gym. I was warming up before the competition. Leo had to pick up his wife with her daughter from the hospital. And Ryan claimed he'd fractured his leg, and the team doctor was giving him a massage. Who's behind the player's disappearance? It's Ryan. Getting a massage when your leg's broken? Really? A rich businessman called the police Uh and said a precious vase from his collection had gone missing. When the detective arrived, he found out the businessman had just returned from his overseas trip. While he was away, a security guard was looking after the house. The man was questioned. It happened last night. I was in the same room with the vase reading. Suddenly, the power went out. I heard the doorbell ring and hurried to open the door. But there was no one outside. When I came back, the vase was gone. The detective didn't believe the security guard and arrested him. Why? The doorbell can't ring if there's no electricity. Caroline went for a walk to the park. Deep in her thoughts, the girl wasn't really looking where she was going. That's why she didn't notice a pit in the ground and fell into it. When she came around, she found herself in a strange room. There were no windows, no door. In the dim light, the girl saw a table with three apples on it. And was it a note? To get out of this trap, you've got to eat an apple. But only one of them isn't poisoned. Pick carefully. Caroline was terrified. But after examining the apples, she bravely bit into one of them, and nothing bad happened. Which apple did she choose? The girl chose the apple with the worm peeking out of it. If this creature can eat the fruit, a human can too. Mary worked as a maid in a rich family. Once, they left for a one-week vacation. The girl stayed alone and looked after the house. When her employers returned, the wife discovered that two of her diamond rings had gone missing. The woman called the police and accused Mary of taking the jewelry. Can you help the girl prove she has nothing to do with the theft?
Mary was probably not very attentive while cleaning the house. One of the rings is under the sofa, the other in the bucket. It was the first day of school when the principal's wallet went missing. There were three suspects, the gardener, the math teacher, and the coach. Here's what they said. The gardener was mowing the front yard. The math teacher was checking the surprise test he'd given his students. And the coach was meeting new people who wanted to join the school's soccer team. Who took the wallet? It was the math teacher. Nobody gives surprise tests on the first day of school. Landon's mother is going to visit her relatives in another town. Before leaving, she enters her son's room to say goodbye. Oh my, it's a terrible mess. And the boy's playing games on his phone. The woman takes the gadget away and locks it in her safe. I'll tell you the password only after you send me a photo of your room, tidy and squeaky clean. She's at the railway station when Landon sends her the photo. She's happy at first, before she realizes it's an old one. How did she understand it? The date on the departure board at the station is December 20th, 2020. But it's July 5th, 2019 on the calendar in Landon's room. Logan is a special agent who's trying to catch a notorious villain. After long months of investigation, he finds the criminal's Uh headquarters. But the door is locked, which is not a surprise, really. Logan sees a screen next to the entrance. He touches it, and the display lights up. Mmm, it must be a riddle. Our special agent needs to solve it to get inside. Add one line to make it right. 9.5 9.5 equals 10, 10, 10. Logan cracks the puzzle in no time. What's the answer? Nine point five equals 10, 2, 10. The door opens, and the man steps into a dark corridor. After walking some time, Logan notices a door. Ah, a code lock again. That's when the man also spots a calendar hanging on the wall. At the bottom, there are several letters, M, F, W. After connecting the dots, the special agent figures out the code. What is it? It's 153. The letters stand for the days of the week, Monday, Friday, and Wednesday. Monday is the first day, Friday the 5th, and Wednesday the 3rd one. The door swings open and Logan sees a room. There's not much inside, just an old mattress, several half-rotten fruits in the corner, a small knife half-hidden under the mattress, and a water dispenser with a bottle of water on top of it. The villain must have kept someone here. Anyway, there are four doors leading out of the room. Behind the first one, there's a mother bear with a cub. The second one leads to a lake with hungry crocodiles. Behind the third door, there's a room filled with toxic gas. And the fourth door hides a wall of fire. With his special training, Logan doesn't need much time to choose the door and leave the room. Which one does he pick? The third one. The agent empties the water bottle. Then he uses the knife to cut it in such a way that his head fits in. His scarf helps prevent the toxic air from entering the bottle. He runs into a room. In the corner, Logan sees a staircase. It leads to the basement. Down there, there are three men. Each of them is tied to a chair and claims that one of the other two is the villain. They tell Logan they've been locked in there for at least four days. The special agent looks at the men attentively and soon figures out who the criminal is. Can you do the same? The villain is the man on the left. Four days have passed, but he has no stubble whatsoever. Case solved. Allison is a big boss in an international company. One day, she's hurrying to an important meeting, 
when she notices the documents she needs haven't been printed out. But she's asked at least three of her subordinates to do it. Ian says he's just returned from the supermarket because they've run out of coffee beans. Robert claims he's been terribly busy drafting a new contract. And Alice answers she's been in the kitchen, preparing snacks and making coffee for the meeting. Who's actually forgotten about the task and making up excuses at the last moment? It's Alice. There's no coffee in the office. Then how could she make it? Uh Uh-huh.